I'm Jules Jaffe. I'm a research scientist at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, part of the University of California, San Diego. I started my career being recruited by the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, and that resulted in, in helping to build the Argo system that actually found the Titanic. As a research scientist, I am asked by the university to think of interesting subjects that would result in exploration and discovery of science in the ocean. The MAUE, which were named because they're miniature autonomous explorers, is in very layman's terms a float that one places in the sea and tracks its three-dimensional trajectory. Over the last five to six years, we've done a number of experiments to use these miniature floats to study how currents push things around. So we would typically put them in for a couple of afternoons. We would get a lot of data. We would analyze their trajectories. And uh, we've learned a lot of interesting things about plankton and how they're pushed around. The thing that I'm really excited about related to the future of this technology is multidimensional. First of all, even though we're fascinated with outer space, <laughs> we know very little about the submerged part of our own planet. And, and the ocean plays a huge role in global ecology. Half of the oxygen we breathe is produced by little photosynthetic creatures in the ocean. So the first thing that gets me excited about this technology is the act of learning things that we hadn't known before. So that's the first thing. The second thing that gets me excited about this technology is the revolution that's happening in accessibility. So what we're seeing today is what I think is referred to as a maker generation. So, so we can actually now three-dimensionally print components of all kinds of things, including underwater vehicles as one example, and build these for a fraction of what they would have cost as recent as 10 years. So it's this sort of combination of unknown and the hyperbolic increase in accessibility is what gets me really, really excited. These miniature vehicles are not very expensive and they can tell us so much about what's going on in the sea. There are a number of projects now to increase the density of miniature vehicles that would allow us to have better sampling. So imagine you have a chemical that goes down and then we sample it here and here. Well, we didn't really know where it stopped. So if we could have multiple samples at higher densities, we could understand where it was, but if we can then track that in time, then we could see the dynamics of it and the physics of it. So there is a initiative in the US now to look at even building 50,000 vehicles that can go into the sea. And there really is no limit uh, to the knowledge that we would obtain with, with the right sensors in having swarms of underwater vehicles. We want to make them smaller. I have a little egg on my desk, which is a, an old toy, which in the States was called Silly Putty. And it's about the size of an egg. And, and it reminds me that I want to build a robot that is that big. What a fascination there is with exploring these micro worlds as an inhabitant, not as an observer. This robotic technology, the maker generation, and the future of underwater miniature robots, I like to think of myself as the father. Maybe I'm more like the grandfather <laughs> uh, of this technology. And, and I think of it as something that I'm really proud of that I could usher this new generation in. Subscribe to the Science Museum's channel to discover more fascinating science stories.